Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Mona Virgili and thank you for watching. We start the show this week with economic development news. The County Council has given its approval to a plan that provides a new vision for the White Oak area of Montgomery County. As Susan Kennedy tells us, the proposal is expected to bring much needed investment to that east part of the county. Susan? Lorna, the County Council has wrapped up its discussions on the White Oak Science Gateway Plan, which aims to build on the assets of that area and create a vibrant community. The council has approved this major plan that will provide residents there access to more jobs, housing, and amenities. This new vision will revive the eastern part of Montgomery County that has been struggling for a number of years. But the real issue for us is that we're setting a vision uh, for White Oak, a uh, possibility. Uh, we're defining it really as an economic opportunity center for the, for the county, and we will uh, approve parameters that will make it possible for the, for the private sector, not the government, but the private sector to really invest, add amenities, and add jobs. That's our priority. Uh, we would expect there will also be some additional housing. Today, White Oak consists of mostly aging strip malls and office parks. The plan envisions transforming the area into urban mixed-use neighborhoods with up to 8,500 new homes and 40,000 new jobs. The planning area encompasses close to 3,000 acres anchored by the Food and Drug Administration headquarters near New Hampshire Avenue and Route 29. Challenges, it's not a bus rapid transit uh, proposal for White Oak has to be part of a major system, uh, none of which has been fully costed out. We really don't know what, what that would involve. So. Uh, I think it, that's a best effort um, element within this plan to say, yes, we're concerned about this and we'd like to see uh, what it would take uh, to make this really happen. A major sticking point for the council with this plan, congestion that would be generated by the development. The plan fails county traffic tests because of the congestion it would create on Route 29. An amendment approved by the council would request a financing plan for bus rapid transit within two years to coincide with development as it moves ahead. Mixed use, residential, you know, with, um, with shopping and amenities, that's what people want to see in White Oak, that's what they need to see in White Oak. The, the jobs piece will also be a part of it. And so, you know, we have an opportunity to create like 40,000 jobs and to, re, to return revenue to the county at full build out, that'll be about a billion dollars a year. I mean, that's not an opportunity we should, we should be thumbing our nose at. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. Federal officials joined Executive Ike Leggett in a recent visit of the Montgomery County Correctional Facility in Boyd's. Secretary of Labor Tom Perez and Attorney General Eric Holder tour education and training classrooms as well as the American Job Center housed within the 1,000 bed facility. We've had an opportunity this afternoon to uh, take a tour and to see some of the men and women who work here in our correction system and to understand the job and the role that they play, but also look at some unique programs in Montgomery County in order to assist those who need help in reentry. Um, I think what you're seeing here um, at the Montgomery County the Department of Corrections is, is a national leader in uh, looking at this, the problems that confront our nation and that have bedeviled our nation, I think, for, for so long, coming up with really new approaches, new ways of, of doing things. Employment resources through the American Job Center has improved employment outcomes for former inmates. Secretary Perez and Attorney General Holder will discuss opportunities to expand this model to correctional facilities across the country. County Council President Greg Rice left his car behind for a trip with Ride On recently to get a first-hand experience to find out just how the system is doing serving customers. What he found out was that it took him four times longer to make the trip from Germantown to Shady Grove than it would if he had taken his car. Well, I think it highlights for me uh, some of the challenges that were associated with some of the budget cuts we made uh, quite a ways back when it came to ride on routes. And uh, uh, we certainly need to continue to beef that up. It really is about money uh, being devoted to be able to 
uh, shave some of the times off of these routes. And yeah, it's, it certainly is great to be able to experience it so you know firsthand what those differences might mean to people. Council President hopes to get a larger slice of the state's gas tax this year to restore some routes and make the system even more convenient for customers. This week, County Council held a briefing on the impact and needs of unaccompanied minors who are crossing the border to enter the United States. According to county officials, some of these children are already in Montgomery County and more are expected. Executive Ike Leggett said the county will not turn these kids away. My view is that these are minors. Uh, we need to do what is compassionate, what is right, what is moral, what is ethical, and we're going to do that. Uh, certainly we can't do it alone as a county. We need the help and support of some of the private organizations uh, to help in that endeavor. But uh, we want to be supportive and we will be supportive. Details of that depends on uh, what organizations are available to help, um, what n the number of kids that may come to Montgomery County. But here's what, what people don't realize. We already have some of those kids in Montgomery County. I mean, because you have large numbers of families and large numbers of people in Montgomery County from many of those communities. So some of the people are here, and we don't get support for them. And so we've had this as a challenge for some time. Council plans to hold another briefing on this topic in the fall. Executive Ike Leggett joined other county officials this week as the Housing Opportunities Commission launched a pilot program that will bring laptop computers to afternoon. the reach of low-income uh, families. HOC Connects will grant these families the opportunity to purchase laptops through interest-free loans. Uh, this program is to span, and what we are looking at today is an opportunity to close that gap the financial and technology gap, more importantly, the achievement gap. That's something that we can do something about, and this program helps. The challenges that we face today, I think, can be eliminated, uh, but it will require us to continue to meet that goal and objective. HOC is the first housing authority in the nation to offer such a program. When we come back, there is a new business center in Rockville, but it is for women only. And MCPS incoming seventh graders will have to get two shots before starting school later in August. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. At the 66th Annual Montgomery County Agricultural Fair, you can feel country in the air. Experience our thriving agricultural community and enjoy all of your favorite rides and food. Witness the stars of big time wrestling, WWE legend Mick Foley, the Mighty Midgets, and more. If you've never seen a monster truck perform twin 360 backflips, don't miss this year's fair. Only $10 admission and kids 11 and under get in free every day. Visit mcagfair.com for more information. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Vigili. Parents of students entering seventh grade are reminded that new immunization requirements would require all incoming seventh graders to get two additional vaccinations. The county's Department of Health and Human Services will provide free Tdap and MCV4 vaccinations during the back to school fair on Saturday, August 23rd from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The fair will be held at MCPS's Carver Educational Center in Rockville. Registration is required and can be made online. For additional information, you can call 240-777-1550. Women entrepreneurs and business owners in Maryland have a new home and it is in Rockville. The group recently moved to a new larger office in the city. Rockville 11's Katie Giardi has to report from the grand opening. 
Yay! Rockville Economic Development and the Maryland Women's Business Center recently celebrated the opening of a new, larger office space at 51 Monroe Street. So our new space really offers us uh, the opportunity to hold bigger workshops and seminars and community meetings, actually. Uh, we can now, we were very crammed in our old space, uh, and really more than 20 or 25 people was a challenge for us. The Maryland Women's Business Center was founded by Ready in 2010 to help women entrepreneurs launch and grow thriving businesses. Today, that's what we do. We help women here on the ground level think bigger, think differently, and to access the tools, the networks, the techniques, the programs, whatever they need to think a little bigger and start with a business that looks bigger from the beginning. More than 100 people attended the ceremony, which also celebrated the Women's Business Center's designation as an official U.S. Small Business Administration resource partner. Dignitaries included Rockville City Council members Beryl Feinberg and Virginia Onley, Montgomery Council member Nancy Florine, U.S. Small Business Administration Regional Administrator Natalia olson Urteco, and National Women's Business Council Chair Carla Harris. Women entrepreneurs are the fastest sector of entrepreneurs growing in this country. And it's really important that we continue to give women the training and the support that they need to not only start their businesses, but more importantly, to expand and scale their businesses for job creation. Those of you here who are women entrepreneurs, thank you for doing what you're doing. We need you to continue to grow, to start, to you know impact this economy the way you are. And we're here to help at the SBA. And the Women's Business Center is now here to provide you with the counseling and training you need. For more information about the Maryland Women's Business Center or to sign up for one of their workshops or one-on-one -on -one coaching, go to MarylandWBC.org. County officials would like to remind residents to be safe while they grill this summer. Some tips to remember are to keep the grill at least 10 feet from the house and other wooden structures. Properly dispose of ashes by letting them cool and placing them in a metal container. Never dump ashes into a plastic container, cardboard box, bag, or in any place where combustible fluids or fumes are present. It's also important to inspect the gas tank before starting up the grill. Before we start our grill, we got to make sure that all the hoses are in good shape. Um, and nothing is leaking, no cracks, nothing wrong with it. Where the grill, what you have over here, where it's connecting into the propane, it's, it's tightening pretty good. Have working smoke alarms on every level of your home and test them monthly. You should also have a fire extinguisher on hand for the type of grill you're using. You have to make sure that you take a look at the symbols on the side of the fire extinguisher. Like this one is good for A, B, and C, which is for, uh, for wood, for liquid, and what we have over here, electrical equipment. And then you should be trained and know how to use a fire extinguisher. For more information about how to properly dispose of ash, visit the Division of Solid Waste Services website. When we come back, some area kids spend a day of summer reading and shaking it. That's right, with the Let's Read, Let's Move program. And we feature Montgomery College's Welcome Centers. We'll be right back. Sixty minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lauren Avergilli. You might have been curious about classes or events happening at Montgomery College, but don't know where to start. Well, the College Welcome Centers are there to give you a hand. Danielle Stesky has the details. 
Kristen Holmes is a senior at the Walter Johnson High School and she's planning to attend Montgomery College in the fall of 2015. During the summer, she came with her father to the Welcome Center in Rockville to go on a walking tour of the campus. After 45 minutes, they were back. I like it. I see it as a possibility for me to come here. It's good for me to come here and then transfer to another school afterwards. The walking tours in small groups are offered on all campuses. Visitors and future students just need to go to the college website, search for tour and fill out a registration form 24 hours prior to the tour day. The welcome centers are the first stop for any student planning to attend Montgomery College. The staff there is prepared to assist on a variety of topics such as admissions, registration, textbooks and pricing, steps to complete placement tests or submit test scores, financial aid applications, and payment information. Brendan Tatum needed the help to submit his financial aid paperwork. He came to the Welcome Center in Rockville and found out he didn't have the right forms. He would have done a big financial mistake without the help of the staff of the Welcome Center. I went to pay out of pocket <laughs> and been broke all semester. There are Welcome Centers on the three campuses of Montgomery College. In Rockville, it is located at the South Campus Instructional Building. In Germantown, it is at the main entrance of the Sciences and Applied Studies building. In the Tacoma Park Silver Spring campus, it is on the first floor of the Student Services building, near the admissions and counseling offices. There is also a small welcome center on the first floor of Montgomery College Central Services, also known as the Manaki building. More than 16,000 visitors have been at the welcome centers since they opened on August of last year. The Welcome Centers have been an overwhelming success here at Montgomery College. Nothing warms my heart more than to come into the office on a Monday morning and receive an email from a parent or a student who's been helped by our services. August and September are expected to be the busiest months of the season. So don't wait until the last minute to take advantage of the services offered by the Welcome Centers. For Country Report This Week in Rockville, I'm Danielle Stesky. Montgomery College students through the Alternative Break Program are partnering with a Steinbrook Center to help transform the lives of the underprivileged. Here's a story from MCTV. In the 60s and 70s, what spring break meant to the average college student was a traditional beach week road trip. About 30 years ago, a group of college students created what is known as the Alternative Break Program as a way to volunteer in their community and spend their spring break in a positive and safe manner. The Steinbrook Center, nominated by Montgomery College for its support of the college's Alternative Break Program, won Breakaway's 2014 Community Partner of the Year Award. We nominated the Steinberg Center for Community Partner of the Year with Breakaway for the alternative break experience we had with them this past winter. They really package alternative breaks very well through their nonprofit organization. Six years ago, Montgomery College developed an alternative break program where the program has connected over 150 students to community partnered programs. So Alternative Breaks has been at MC since 2008 when our Germantown campus hosted the first trip to Biloxi, Mississippi following a hurricane in the area and they partnered with Habitat for Humanity to provide disaster relief to the region. The first trip I took I was privileged to get chosen um, as a student member um, to go to Tuscaloosa, um, Alabama. Um, they had a tornado sweep through. Um, it was pretty devastating to them, so I ended up doing um, rebuilding efforts with them in the city um, of Tuscaloosa. That was my first time ever leaving the state, ever leaving home, um, ever catching a plane, so it was pretty challenging, but it was incredible. Volunteering is extraordinary, um, no matter how small the deed you may think it is, um, because it allows you to put yourself second and to really go and actively contribute um, something of yourself to help somebody else who is in greater need than you. Um, and it's very humbling and teaches you a lot about yourself. It personally changed my life. For Cutting Report this week, I'm Stan Jones. Although school is out of session, some MCPS students and other area kids were recently reminded that education never takes a break, not even in the summer. MCPS TV has a story. Second grade students from Veers Mill Elementary School went on a field trip to Washington, D.C. to participate in one of the U.S. Department of Education's Let's Read, Let's Move summer programs. 
My students from Veers Mill are here at the Air and Space Museum as part of the Let's Read, Let's Move campaign. Uh, they got to see a puppet show. They got up, they danced with the songs. Uh, they also uh, got to draw and design, uh, design a helmet for their, their space helmet. Uh, and and uh, there was a band, a marching band here where they got to dance and move around. The main goals of this summer enrichment series is to keep children reading, learning, and moving over the summer months with this day's focus on science and space exploration. The Air and Space was a fantastic location just to promote STEM education, science, technology, uh, engineering, and math. Hosted by Education Secretary Arnie Duncan, the event included many interactive activities and lessons with a special book reading by Miss America 2014 Nina Davalori, Attorney General Eric Holder, White House Chief of Staff Dennis McDonough, and celebrity chef Carla Hall. Those of you who want to be a pilot of the space shuttle will need to learn how to fly. After the book reading, children explored the museum and took part in the Let's Move portion of the event, which included astronaut training. Part of the movement activities, we learned uh, some of the exercises that astronauts do. Uh, we learned some of the preparation, and we learned what it's like to live in a space shuttle. We also built uh, a small uh, a small spaceship and learn that collaboration and working together is, is very important. At the end, uh, we had the opportunity to meet Miss America, uh, who promotes STEM education, and uh, she signed our books. It was fantastic. Well, I'm here on behalf of STEM education. The Miss America organization has been working with STEM uh, for four years now. So today was an event really encouraging our youth, our children, to get involved in STEM-related fields um, and get out there and get moving. I love learning how to be an astronaut, and I love the puppet show. I got a free book called I am going to fly today. From today, I want to want to read more. Coming up in County Report this week, we'll show you how to play foot golf at the county's first course. And some county residents are partying at the beat of drums. We'll tell you where to join the fun. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Montgomery College President Dr. Darian Pollard has been named a Champion of Change by the White House. Dr. Pollard was recognized for her work in helping those with criminal records re-enter society with dignity and viable employment opportunities. The Rockville Campus Observatory has been selected as one of the 25 best college observatories in the country by collegerank.net, which ranks colleges for prospective students. It was chosen for its variety of telescopes and also for being a center of educational activity for students and the community. This fall, MC students can begin earning degrees in two programs without ever walking into a classroom. MC will offer fully online degrees in business and information systems. The programs will follow the same curriculum as the traditional programs at the same cost. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lauren Avergilli. Across the country, people are getting together to drum. These drum circles can be larger community groups or just a handful of people. My MC Media's Sonia Burke reports. I'm in Silver Spring on an assignment you can't beat, learning what it's like to be in a drum circle. This drum circle begins with the heartbeat chant and it's led by Stream Orstrom, who is well known locally as the drum circle facilitator. I have led drum circles for two people and I have led drum circles for hundreds of people down on the mall. Tacoma Park resident Gordon Coop has been hand drumming for about 13 years. I saw uh, Stream in, in his group, drumming group, playing at a mall in Silver Spring. And I was blown away. It was really cool. I said, oh, I got to do that. So I really come to it naturally. So it's fun. That's the attraction for Beverly Lair, who is a drum circle regular. I love it. It's, it's, it's mentally very freeing. I love the rhythms. It's, it's just compelling. The rhythm is very freeing. The idea behind the drum circle is to bring people together to relax, to celebrate life, and to promote unity. The rhythm is the language, and the experience is described as joyful, healing, and universal. 
In fact, Stream's drum collection includes drums and percussion instruments from all over the world. This large drum here um, is probably from, from uh, Central America, but it was made in the tradition of, of African drums. But you don't have to own a drum to join a drum circle. The facilitator provides the instruments. You can find out more about joining one of Stream's upcoming events online. If you're at all interested, try it out. For County Report This Week, I'm Sonia Burke. There's a new sport kicking around at Northwest Golf Course in Silver Spring, and it has players leaving their clubs and tees behind. My MC Media's Krista Brick reports. I'm at the Northwest Golf Course where all you need is a pair of Argyle socks and a soccer ball to play on the county's first foot golf course. Dozens of golfers kicked off at the course's opening day, but just what is foot golf? And we like to say you're basically playing golf, but you're playing with a bigger hole, a bigger ball, and your leg is the club. Roberto and his wife Laura brought the game to the U.S. Three years later, and this hybrid of golf and soccer is now played in 30 states and 22 countries. The Northwest course here in Silver Spring is just the second foot golf course in Maryland. Oh, that looks good. Oh. Unlike golf, you don't need an arsenal of clubs, just a size 5 soccer ball, sneakers or indoor soccer shoes, and of course, the optional Argyle socks. But just because you can bend it like Beckham doesn't mean you're going to tear up this 18-hole course. A golfers who has a notion about how to kick the ball, they are the best. Also, soccer players with a notion of golf, they do a good game. Or it's a lot of finesse when you're around it, so I think that lends itself more towards golf because soccer is more of a reaction sport and golf is more, I guess, finesse. The sport follows the same rules of golf, more or less and you can shank it just like you do when you play golf. It looks really easy and it's really not easy at all. You expect the ball to go one way and then you kick it and it doesn't go that way. The game is bringing new customers and their cash to the course. What's, what's great about foot golf is that foot golf, you know, we can do a tee time of foot golf and a tee time of regular golf. So it's mixed right in, it's easy to play and that's what makes it fun. Next up lacrosse fans, fling golf coming soon to a Montgomery County course near you. For County Report This Week, I'm Krista Brick. National Night Out will be celebrated on August 5th at 14 locations throughout the county. County Executive Ike Leggett, along with Police Chief Tom Manger, will be visiting the locations. National Night Out is a yearly event that gives residents the opportunity to meet up with law enforcement officials to discuss crime prevention methods. Neighborhood watch groups, businesses, civic groups, and individuals gather to keep crime watch volunteers informed, interested, and motivated. This is the 31st anniversary of National Night Out. For more information on a neighborhood night out near you, visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. The month of August would not be complete without a visit to the annual Montgomery County Agricultural Fair at the fairgrounds in Gaithersburg. The Montgomery County Agricultural Fair is Maryland's leading county fair. This nine-day event showcases entertainment, livestock, rides, food, and exhibits. This is one of the largest single events in the Washington, D.C. area and has been an annual tradition for 66 years. The gates will be open August 8th through the 16th. Visit mcagfair.com for more information. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. Today, we leave you with some images from the Great Seneca Stream Valley Park. I'm Lorna Virgili, and thank you for watching.